You got some good picture on Not really? No, I, it's so dark I can't see anything really. My name is Sergeant Zane Vanderholst. I serve at a 6-4 battery in Yorkton, part of 10th Field Regiment with the artillery. I joined in between grade 11 and 12, which was in 2003. I started my application process on my 16th birthday and then I got enrolled on my 17th birthday in the reserves. I enlisted mostly because I have family that enlisted. I have two cousins that were in at the same time as me. Also my brother enlisted, competitive siblings kind of thing and it was a, as a way to make extra cash in high school. My mom was very supportive, my dad was very supportive as well. He never really said so much, but he was very proud of me doing it. He told all his friends about it more than me. Started training in Yorkton, then I went to Dundurn for my basic and my soldier qualification. It was an eye-opener, a uh, 17-year-old kid. I was used to being yelled at by principals and teachers and my mom and dad, but not from someone big and scary. Our day consisted of getting woken up with garbage cans thrown down the middle of the barracks. They came in big and loud and if it wasn't made properly they throw your bed or they toss your locker or just kind of things to to break you down and get you kind of where they want you to be. <laughs> You want to make the units as best as possible, so you want to weed out the people that are not necessarily weaker, but not sure that they want to be there. It's common to lose a third of your course. There was three of us in Yorkton that went on training that summer, and we were all in high school still. And they asked if anybody would want to go fight the fires in BC, and all three of us put up our hands. So I missed the first two weeks of grade 12 because I was in Kelowna fighting fires. After high school graduation, I spent time in Shiloh, Manitoba, Gagetown, New Brunswick, and then completed a seven month tour in Afghanistan in 2008. I did the first 10 months of workup training as the artillery, ready to go over with the battle group. And then the last month of training, they needed more guys for the provincial reconstruction team. They needed more guys to drive and man a remote weapon system so went over to Edmonton and got caught up quickly on their training for CIMIC, Civil Military Cooperation. We weren't part of the battle group, we were there as help and support for the people. The provincial reconstruction team as a whole consisted of RCMP, government organizations, the army and then CIMIC and PSYOPs which stands for Psychological Operations. And what we would do is when there was a school that needed to be built or a well that needed to be dug, we would go to a village, talk to the village elders, find out what they needed most, and then we'd pay local guys to do the work. So we were helping locals twice. We would make sure that things were being built by the right specs and the right timelines. My team, I was lucky we were right in Kandahar City, was our area of operations, so we stayed right on Camp Nathan Smith the whole time. When I got there, it was in March, so it wasn't as hot, and it built up to their summer, and then it was really hot, and you just learned to throw bottles of water in the deep freeze before you went out on patrol, because if your truck's AC broke down, then you'd shove a bottle of ice in the vent and have that blow on you instead or shove them into your shirt or your vest. <laughs> two kind of typical days that there could have been. We could have been slated for 
a mission outside the wire. We'd go to orders and jump in the truck and drive outside the wire and do our meetings, come back for lunch, keep all our stuff at the truck still because we were going to probably go out again in the afternoon to a different village or, or working protection for someone else. And then the other typical day was a lot less exciting. It was computer work. It was really interesting. I learned a little bit of the language and a little bit of the customs. Best memory, they have a holiday there. I don't remember what it was, but we helped them with it right outside of our gates. We had a whole bunch of people donate sacks of rice and just all kinds of stuff. And we put together packages, kind of like a operation shoebox thing anybody that came by they got a sack of rice and we just loaded them up with tons of stuff we had lots of stuff donated and that we bought also like with our with our funding and we had i don't even know how many people come out but they came out on motorbikes we had one guy walk carrying all his stuff home they just came from all over the place and got this food and got a handout kind of thing so that's probably my best memory of it. Now that I have two girls, another day sticks out. There was a school that was bombed and we went and talked to the village and they were very progressive because they wanted a school built for their girls. And that was never heard of before. Girls weren't allowed to go to school in their culture. So now seeing the school built and girls going to school and learning and the smiles on their face because they get a, a book and a pack of pencils kind of thing. And they just, how much they treasured, just a, even a box of pencils and an eraser. They were just ecstatic. Them being able to go because their village elder said that they could, uh, they wanted the best for them. They wanted them educated and just seeing that they were cared for enough that they got something like that. It wasn't toys that made them light up as much as school supplies. Hostilities weren't very big towards us because we were separate from the battle group. We weren't the ones going in and hunting down the bad guys and kicking in doors and stuff like that. We were trying to repair the structure afterwards and help them afterwards and they mostly knew that we were there to help them. And so they were very friendly towards us, most of them. <laughs> I got lots of handshakes and, and smiles and nods. We would throw out coloring books out of our truck and stuff like that to the kids and toys and anything that we could get. And seeing the kids gather around us waiting for that kind of was a token of appreciation too. We were going out typical day of just driving around and that was a month after we were already there so we were still complacent nothing had happened and then all of a sudden we got ambushed and all those bullet holes showed up and i don't remember much of anything else except thinking holy crap i'm actually in afghanistan this is not gonna be a safe lackadaisy tour that i thought it was gonna be for the last month I'm proud that I went and served overseas. I did it for kind of selfish reasons. I, I wanted to go over there and fight the war there instead of having it come back to Canada. I don't think people quite realize that there are bad people out there that if you don't fight them in their backyard, they're gonna come to yours. And then you're risking your family and your property instead of theirs. I'm very big on Remembrance Day and I want my girls to be conscientious of it and respectful of Remembrance Day. If you don't remember your history, you're doomed to repeat it kind of thing. And I mean, I I know people that we've lost overseas, so I just wanted to do something kind of remember them by. On my right wrist says, with distant thunder, and on my left one is, come steal rain, and it's in Dutch, just because I am Dutch. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old.
Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down in the sun and in the morning, we will remember them.